Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video sponsored by Simon Says Stamp. Today we're going to be using some Simon products. So I'm using the reverse polka background, the stitched rectangles dies, and then the spring seeds stamps and dies. This is actually from their spring release last year, um, but I never got a chance to use them. I just thought they were so cute. Um, so here I'm working uh, with my large, the original size Misty, so the big one. And I have some repositional adhesive on the back of my cardstock. This is Nina 80 pound cardstock. And I am going to stamp this polka dot background in multiple colors. So the way that I like to do that is I kind of swipe my ink pad all over and then I start um, doing the traditional pressing of the ink pad. And I just feel like that gives me a um, better coverage. And then I stood up from my chair and made sure I gave it good pressure. And I was to I did it my Misty because I was totally prepared to have to stamp it again. And I could not believe that I got um, just complete coverage in one stamping. I was so impressed. <laughs> um, so anyway, this one, I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm just kind of swiping my ink pad all over and then pressing all over with the ink pad. The reason, can you hear my dog yawning behind me? Like she's got nowhere else to be at 3.40 in the morning, but just yawning behind me while I do my voiceover. Yeah, I had to kick her out. I had to, she had to go. I had to kick her out of the craft room because she wouldn't be quiet. Um, anyway, so basically you just want to make sure that you're getting really good coverage. However, that's going to, however you get that result. Um, this is just what works best for me. So in this one, while I was stamping, um, I did have one little area that I didn't have good pressure on. And that's the joy of the Misty right there, folks. I mean, it is an unnecessary tool, but man, it is a nice one. Um, because you can go back in and stamp it again. Um, so once all my backgrounds were stamped, and I did pick some more like pastel colors because spring is coming, baby. I cannot wait. There are buds on my trees. I'm like, yes, winter is nearly over. Hallelujah. Um, so here I'm stamping my main uh, focal point images on some Canson watercolor paper. I am using the Black Simon to stamp ink because I am not going to be doing Copic coloring alert the media, I'm actually going to be doing something that you guys have asked me about quite a bit. And I'm going to be using the Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. So I have the 24 pack. Um, I kind of swatched them all out. And then um, to, in order to get the cards, or the colors right for the cards I'm making, I put down the inks that I was using and then I figured out what colored pencils I was going to need or watercolor pencils I was going to need to get that look. The way that I approach them is... I like to put down the color where I want it to be the darkest, so wherever my shadows are going to be. And for um, the pink-ish, I used poppy red. Um, the gray is a charcoal gray. In order for me to get this sea foam color to match this dusty sage, I actually had to mix colors because they didn't have a sea foam in this pack. Um, so I mixed the leaf green and the sea blue to kind of get that look. And I did put them down on the leaves together, right? So I haven't had, I haven't added any water and I just put down that color there. And then I'm going to use the charcoal gray for all of the banners, um, just so they'll kind of fade out to white in the middle, but they will have a little bit of shading. So I'm working with a number two round brush. I'm going to go in and put um, a little bit of water where the pigment is. And then where I want it to be lighter, I'm actually going to rinse off my brush and then go back in with clean, clear water. So for the leaves, I'm doing the same thing. I'm adding a little bit of water. It's not bubbled up. It's just a sheen. I'm just trying to get that pigment moving. Um, and then I will rinse off my brush, blot it off, and then with a damp brush go in and kind of spread it out to the edge of the petals so that there is a gradient of color. Now, I did not keep doing this for the leaves. I just want to FYI on that. Um, it was a very, very soft look, and I found that I liked a bolder look a little bit better. So the reason that I went from the bunny to the leaves is because I wanted to give the ears and the nose time to dry before I did the gray. These are still watercolors. If you work in two areas next to each other that are wet, they st they will still run together. This is just a different um, medium, a different application to get that watercolor look. So for the bunny especially, because I wanted it to be white mostly white, whitish, light gray. Um, I went in with clean, clear water in the um, areas I wanted to be white. And then I took that to the gray and kind of let it bloom out. 
Now, in order to go back in and add a little bit more shading, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I did not see good results with going in with the colored pencil while the paper was wet. So in order to add some more shading and darker color, I'm actually just holding the colored pencil in my hand and picking up some pigment on my paintbrush right from the tip of the watercolor pencil. Um, and I did find that that worked really well for me. I was able to get pretty intense color, but I wasn't using a lot of water, just just so you're aware. Like there, I wasn't completely soaking the tip of that colored pencil. I was only using enough water in order to pick up some pigment. So I did go back into his fur and add a couple of little just general strokes to kind of make him look fuzzy. And then for the banner, and this is the way I'm going to do all the banners, I added clean water to the middle. And then I kind of um, took that clean water out to the edges where I have added the shading. And then I just let the water do the work. I let it do its thing. Whatever it looked like, it looked like. Um, I just felt like this one was a little bit plain. The green wasn't as bold as I wanted it. It had a lot of just neutrals with the gray. And so I decided I was going to put in a little bit of a blue background. Um, I discovered for the blue um, that I used, that I think it's Winter Sky, I didn't have that particular type of blue, that like baby blue. All of these um, watercolor pencils are pretty vivid. So what I ended up mixing for those was the field green and the, um, is it the, it might have been the, the sea, yeah, still the sea blue. But I used more blue than green is all. Um, and here on camera, it looks, it actually looks much greener than it does in real life. In real life, it definitely looks blue. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, but just went in and kind of add that in. Um, and I did that same technique with just taking the, um, the pigment right off the end of the, uh, colored pencil. So I'm just going to go through and do these, um, you know, the leaves are the same every time. The banners are the same every time. Um, but with these leaves is where I kind of switched up the technique that I was doing. And that's so that's why I left these in. I'm not trying to bore you to tears with making you watch me watercolor every single leaf on all of these cards. Um, so when I did it the first time, I went in and did it the same way that I did before, where I added the water just to the, the pigment to get it kind of moving. And then I would bring in the clean water um, to help kind of spread it out. For the second set of leaves, I did not do that. I basically just went in with a slightly damp paintbrush and then I let the pigment, I, I carried the pigment myself all the way out to the edge of the leaf. It gave me a more vibrant color and one honestly that I liked a whole lot better. Um, so I will eventually go back and fix the other leaves and that and that technique is how I did it for out, um, for the rest of the cards. So one thing I just want to know um, that I find a little bit helpful when I'm doing multiple cards, you'll see in the center there that there's um, just little letter notations. Before I start coloring anything and I'm making multiple cards, I go in and kind of just assign them a background. So that way I know where, like when I'm doing my coloring, what coloring I'm, I'm picking. So like this one up here and the, the, the one we're doing now with the flowers, I knew it was going to go on the purple background. And so I decided to do the flowers with the poppy red, which would make them pink. Um, I ended up at the end, you'll see, I'll go back in and add a little bit of violet. Um, but the bottom one was for the, the pink, the bunny was going on the pink. Um, I ended up switching them up, which is so funny because like I go through and kind of like denote which one's going to go with which one. And then I almost always end up switching at least one of them, but that's okay. It's all a process. So for the carrots here, I'm using again, the same greens. Um, and I did make them orange, but their orange is, um, what is this called? I think it's called tangerine. It's very, very bright, very, very bright. Um, and so I didn't really love the way that they came out. Um, when I did the one below it uh, and to do the flower pot, I actually added in some baked earth to make it more like a terracotta look. And I liked that a whole lot better. And so um, I ended up adding that to the carrots as well. Anyway, while we're watching the coloring. So while I was doing this, you know, in between taking breaks and momming, wifing, you know, doing all the things. 
um, I had to go downstairs to my basement. Um, and I opened the door to the garage and there's this big fat spider that is just on my wall. Like I love spring because like it gets warmer and all these things can get up out of my garage. I mean, I don't understand how many do I have to kill. And so anyway, I was like trying to work up the nerve to kill him and I ended up taking a picture of it and posting it on my Instagram story. So if you saw that, um, but so I'm standing there and he's big and fat and just grossing me out completely, totally just creep fill. And, um, so I'm like trying to get the nerve up to kill him. And I, all I have is my slipper, which does have a hard sole, but then I'm like, well, if I take off my slipper, then I'm going to have to stand in my garage and my sock foot and then my socks will be dirty. And then I, I like, I'll have to walk around with dead spider on my slipper. And so I just decided I'm going to go get one of my husband's shoes. So I go get my husband's shoes. I'm like, slay your own dragons, princess. Let's do this. And so I smush him and he, his little carcass falls to the ground and I smush all the little area underneath it that's in my garage. Um, and then I'm like, yes, I killed him. And I go back inside. And then an hour later, I go back out there and I'm like, I'm chill now. Cause I know I killed the spider and I left his little carcass there and, um, I'm good. And like, so I'm bend. Oh, what did I, I can't even remember what I was picking up, but I bent over to pick something up and there's like, so when you walk out the door of my, my garage, there's like a half wall. That's what I, that's what I smushed him against originally. Then there's a the full wall that's around the corner. And so I bent over to pick up a water, maybe? I don't know. I bent over to pick up something. And there's this dude, this spider, chilling on the opposite wall. Chilling. I didn't get him. I didn't smush him. He's still alive. Still breathing air. So I'm like, now I got to go get this shoe again and try for the second time. So I do. I go back in the house. I get it. And I smush him up against the wall, except again, I didn't smush him up against the wall. Like, I don't, like, I was hitting him. Okay, people, I was, I was hitting him with the shoe. And he was just, I, I mean, he had a guardian angel. I don't know what it was. And like, the whole time I was laughing to myself because um, they have that new animation, Lucas, Lucas the Spider. And the person who created Lucas the Spider was like, I just really wanted people to see how adorable spiders can be first. Lucas, the animated spider, is adorable. He is the voice of a five-year-old. He's super cute. I would not kill Lucas. However, this dude was not Lucas, okay? He wasn't cute. He wasn't fuzzy. He didn't say, you know, cute little things like, now it's time for me to escape, which by the way, if you've never seen Lucas, I totally encourage you to look that up because it is really, really adorable. It's not going to stop me from murdering spiders. I don't care. They have to go. Um, so yeah, so I would title this spider murder house number three, but no murder actually took place because I was just completely inept at the killing of the spider. So he's probably still in my garage. I need spring to come so that they'll all move out because apparently my wardings are not sufficient. They know, they know now I've shown weakness. I'm an inefficient spider killer. So anyway, that's your story for this week. Not a happy story. It's a very sad story. Um, so now most of the coloring is done here. You did see me go back and just kind of make some of the edits that I was talking about for um, this one on the right with the little uh, galoshes and watering can. I decided to add in like a little bit of dirt underneath it because they just looked kind of, um, I don't know, a little bit floaty to me. And uh, just to add that darker color, doing that same um, technique where I take the paintbrush to the pencil. So once that's done, everything is dry. Let's note that. Everything needs to be dry. I'm going to go in and stamp the sentiments. And there's a couple of just perfectly sized sentiments for these banners. One of them is Happy Easter. One of them is Hello Spring. One of them is Welcome. They're super cute. So I stamped that down in the same Simon Says Stamp Black Ink. I was super lazy and didn't want to clean my stamp. So I actually just opened up my stamp set so I could put that acetate barrier in between and line them up, which worked perfectly. And now I'm going to put the dies in place. Um, so these were really easy to line up. I just had to use copious amounts of washi tape um, to kind of hold them in place. I didn't have any issues peeling up the washi tape um, where it was like over the color or anything. It didn't peel up any of the color or anything like that. 
And I did at the same time run these little polka dot pieces through using the largest rectangle in the uh, stitch rectangles die. So I'm mounting these on um, a white card base. So um, I just thought they were really cute with like, I'm a sucker for polka dots. I wore a polka dot sweater to work today. I just, I love polka dots. They're so cute. Um, but anyway, so I'm just putting that down so that there's kind of like a white edge. And then I'm going to use um, just kind of an obnoxious amount of scotch foam tape to adhere um, all of my little um, focal points in the middle. Um, so this one is going to be the bunny. The flower went with the purple one. I ended up switching um, the little galoshes and watering can to the blue and then the carrots got the green. So once all of them, I adhered, I built them all the same way. And then I just wanted to go in and add some clear Wink of Stella because these are pretty simple cards. Um, I think they'll be really cute to send out for spring, Easter. Um, I didn't notice any of the color moving with the clear Wink of Stella, which is nice because sometimes it does. Um, and I did go out of lines on some of them and have to lift them and I didn't have any issues lifting either. So I really enjoyed working with these. I will try to do more videos with them in the future, just as kind of a different option for coloring. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.